If you like this video, why not subscribe? Hey everybody from the United States and around the world, welcome back to the weekly recap Q&A. That's the show where I sit in my car and answer questions from the previous week that I got through emails and on YouTube. And I share with you some links that accumulated on Facebook and Twitter. You can find those down below if that's all you're interested in because there's some good ones in there. Uh, and if you were wondering where I've been for the last month, uh, probably some of you know I've been following this since I'm in grad school. I have sort of a really busy schedule, both with school, work, family, etc., etc. So this show sort of got put on the back burner. But I appreciate all the uh, emails and comments people have given me saying they miss the show. Some people told me, you know, they say pretty much treat it like a podcast. Some people listen to it on the way to work. Um, and I'm glad that you find me that I have something interesting or informative to say. Uh, so thank you for asking me to bring it back, and I'm sorry it's been sort of uh, absent. Hopefully uh, that won't happen again, although at the end of the semester coming up, who knows? But unfortunately, something usually has to give, and this show is probably the easiest one not to do, um, even though I keep up on the weekly content. So anyway, um, if you're wondering why I'm in my car, if you haven't seen the show before, it's because the acoustics in my car are really good. I'm sort of a filmmaker without a studio, but I've got this portable sound booth, always good for recording audio if you need to. The car has lots of irregular angles and cushions and things to absorb sound, and so it usually sounds pretty good. This show is recorded on a Sanyo Xacti uh, VPC CG10. It's just a sort of a small pistol grip camera that has uh, onboard microphones, no external mic, uh, but it actually sounds pretty decent, I think, because we're I'm in a car and not on the open or in the bathroom or kitchen where there's a lot of booming echoing because of the shape of the car. Anyway, um, yeah, so some of you probably know that uh, after a long time of thinking, pondering, accumulating some money, I ended up getting a new camera. I was talking about that. That was one of the topics uh, in the past. You know, what camera should I get uh, with some good and expensive lenses, yada, yada. Uh, and this is the one I ended up getting right here. This is the uh, Sony NEX5N. Since Amazon is clearing them out, uh, for about, I got it for 478 That was with the kit lens. Um, which I thought was a pretty good deal. Someone has since told me, you know, you can get the body only for 349 I think it was 339 on Sony's uh, website, Refurbished, which is a pretty good deal, especially the things I've been learning about adapting um, vintage lenses. This is a, an Olympus 50mm uh, still camera lens that was actually donated to me by uh, YouTube user, uh, viewer, uh, Lunkos, I believe is his name, from Australia. So I'm very grateful for that lens and it's been a lot of fun adapting old lenses to this camera. I think this is a really good camera. Some people, you know, people kept telling me, you know, get the GH2 and I agree that has a lot of good, lot going for it, but my $700, $700 budget would only get me the body of that camera. Or with this camera, I could buy the camera, the kit lens, and then get a bunch of accessories, including a bunch of vintage lenses that I'm really getting to. Um, so, yeah, so I think actually, you know, I'm going to use this camera right now and take a picture of the thumbnail for this video. All right, there we go. Uh, great camera. I'm going to be doing more uh, episodes about this camera, what I'm using it for. I mean, there's a lot of information already on YouTube and the web about the NEX, NEX5N, a camera which has been discontinued now, so you can pick it up pretty inexpensively. It's been replaced by the 5R. Uh, but I would like to maybe do an episode about you know what lenses I'm using and why I like this camera more. Test footage, of course, all that kind of stuff. Maybe the test footage could actually be a short film that I've been meaning to make. And I know that you guys have been waiting for something new for me. So at any rate, <clears throat> let's uh, get right into the questions from last week. Uh, actually, I went back a couple weeks to get some of these questions. So I apologize if I haven't been as good responding to YouTube comments and emails. Like I said, I've been really slammed with stuff to do. So I'm going to try and be better about that. Your best chance of communicating with me is probably through email. The frugal filmmaker at gmail.com is a good one to use if you have a question. Send it right to me, and I'll probably give it more time just because I you know, always look at my email versus YouTube comments, which I do read, but they just don't have, they're not as demanding, a higher priority, I, I don't know. Um, just if you really want me to read your comment, please send it to me directly. Okay, so this message is uh, from Aram Morera Mesa, and he asks me about the 5N. Actually, he says, since you, and he's talking about slow motion because I previously did a, uh, a video about creating slow motion with a standard video camera. And he says, now that you uh, have a 5N, you can overcrank it 
at acquisition and then under crank play at normal speed in this case at display time to get nice slow motion I've looked at a few tutorials around and I really like the way Vegas handles the time distortion with the envelope however I noticed my footage was not as smooth as I expected after rendering um, I have looked around and found nothing I was wondering if you had any idea of a Vegas native workflow workflow for slow motion you know I actually came across the same issue um, because I was you know, I, I shot some stuff you know the NEX 5N as many of you know shoots in uh, full 1080p at 60 frames per second so it's one reason people are interested in this camera even if it's just for a slow motion camera you can shoot at full resolution 1920 by uh, 1080 uh, at 60 frames per second so when you slow it down in a standard uh, timeline it looks really smooth because you've got that extra information however the first time I did it um, well first of all you have to make sure your camera is set for the 60p mode of course and you shoot in that mode and then when you go into Vegas, uh, make sure that your timeline is set up for 24p. And the best, best way to do that is to, oh man, I can't remember what the command is, where you actually go to a piece of footage and grab it. Set, set up your timeline that way. Um, just make sure it's a 24p footage so that it will adjust your timeline to that. Then when you put the 60 frames uh, per second footage and you right click on it, go to properties, reduce it to 0.4 the speed, which is 40% it'll look really smooth and that's what I did originally but it didn't work I think I got the same issue you did it was kind of blurry um, it didn't really look smooth but what I realized and I'm going to provide the link below I found someone else who had done this previously and put a, up a really great video on YouTube using slow motion and uh, what they did was you have to set your shutter speed for 125th uh, per second one 125th of a second your shutter speed should be set for that so when you do that and then you put it on your timeline it'll look right that was the thing that I ever looked and I didn't get to look right but I learned that now again I'll provide the link below to that original uh, p blog post and video because it really helped me and it uh, should solve your problem too okay boy I'm feeling ra rather long-winded today I apologize all right uh, Stephen Day sent me a message saying got a question for you I've got a new Canon Vixia HF G10 and I've been doing some reading research on DOF adapters or depth of field adapters. What are your thoughts about this? There seems to be a lot of variation from adapter to adapter. I appreciate it. Um, yeah, the old depth of field adapter, which was really hot for a while, a couple of years, a few years back before the DSLR craze took off, because then you could get shallow depth of field just using interchangeable lenses. Uh, the depth of field adapter, I personally don't like them mostly because you know in those old configurations where you put them on the end of your video camera um, and then you either have a screen that you're focusing on that was either spinning or vibrating or static that would allow you know give you that depth of field but when you do that you're losing light essentially um, you're losing a, I don't know, it was a full stop of light or something so, and, and you're losing some resolution because you're, you're focusing on the screen instead of the actual image coming into your camera so I'm not a big fan um, and with cameras, I mean like the 5N, that's, this is probably the least expensive inter interchangeable lens camera. Actually, that's not true. You can get other interchangeable lens cameras that are less than this, um, but they don't have an articulating screen, which is something I had to have. So I had to have this, because when I put this thing on rigs, I need to be able to see it from different angles, and this screen allows you to do that. It doesn't let you see it from the front, so video blogging and things like that don't really work well with this camera, but that's not why I got it. I got it for, uh, as I've called it before, this is kind of a DP's camera. Anyway, my point was that you can have, there are lots of inexpensive cameras from, even from like $300, some older models, that they might not have the articulating screen, it's, you know, fixed on the back, but they will accept other lenses. Um, things like, I think the Panasonic, you know, GF3, something like that, which is a relative of the GH2. Um, at any rate, I think that spending money on a depth of field adapter on your current camera you, like I said, you're going to lose resolution and lose light coming into the camera. So I would recommend just going for one, one of these other ones. Um, so I haven't really tinkered with that too much, but again, I never really was sold on them because of those things that you would lose out on. And now they're they're uh, pretty obsolete. So I would, yeah, that's what I, that's what I would do, which is what I've done with this. Uh, all right. And finally, today we have a, a YouTube comment from... Awesome Star 3333. That's Awesome Star 3333 who asks, "How do you create a blog with a .dot com?" Um, now this is a comment on the uh, 
growing your YouTube channel video where I talk about buying a domain name um, and using that domain name to promote yourself, promote all your stuff. The great name about getting a domain, the great thing, excuse me, about getting a domain name, uh, buying it, I think I, I believe I bought mine through GoDaddy.com. Um, the frugalfilmmaker.com was a domain name that I bought, and since I owned it, I can then redirect that uh, URL to anywhere on the web. Uh, so of course I redirect it to my blog. The, the blog is set up through Blogger. It's a free blogging service owned by Google, and uh, but you know it's got the uh, blogspot.com. So if you have like scottsblog.blogspot.com, that's a name that. You don't want to really have to tell people because they'll always forget it. No one, no one really remembers blogspot names unless they're on Blogger or really into blogging and stuff. But if you want to tell your grandma, hey, reread read my blog. It's, it's on uh, you know scottsblog.blogspot.com. You're going to get a lot of raised eyebrows with stuff like that. So to simplify that, you can buy a domain name. It costs you probably costs you like twelve bucks a year, thefrugalfilmmaker.com, for example. And then when people type that in, it goes right to my blog. So even though you can't necessarily set up custom names. You can set up custom names on free services like Blogger, but they'll always have those tag, those extra web address things in them, the dot blogspot or, or what have you. So that's all you have to do is just buy the name and then you can just go into the uh, settings on the website where the domain is hosted and tell it where to go and you're all set. Okay, so that's all the questions that I have for today with the return of the weekly recap. This week there'll be another uh, episode. I'm not quite sure exactly what that's going to be yet. <laughs> Still kind of formulating that, uh, but tune in. I appreciate all the great comments and support everyone has been giving me. Uh, don't forget also to check out the Facebook group. If you go to Facebook and search for the Frugal Filmmaker, there's also a link below to get to that. Become a member of that group, which is really easy, and there's all kinds of great information and great people on that group willing to answer questions, review your videos, uh, post great deals. Uh, we find and all sorts of things like that. There's also Twitter where I'm a uh, frugal filmmaker on Twitter and my blog is frugalfilmmaker.com and of course here on YouTube. So that's everything uh, today. Have a great week. Make movies. Do all that good stuff and we'll see you next time.